Hey everybody, Brian Tro coming to you from Mossy Creek Fly Fishing with your fly fishing forecast. The date today is Monday, May 31st. It's Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Uh, some of you who are familiar with our shop have asked about this great flag that we've got here in our stairwell. And uh, this is, was presented to my grandmother for the service of our grandfather in World War II. So he was on the uh, USS Stephen Potter in the Pacific Campaign. So happy Memorial Day to everybody. Hope you all are having fun. I hope a bunch of you are on the water today, uh, enjoying hopefully a day off. Uh, we're gonna jump right into the forecast here. Uh, looks like after some really, really cold, uh, damp, it's actually a crazy week last week. Cold and wet all weekend, low in the 40s, a low 40s, high in the 50s. Um, and then all last week, it got up to 90 several times. We had big thunderstorms, so kind of a wild, wild week weather-wise. Uh, looks like the next couple days are going to be pretty nice. Highs of about 80, so a little bit more seasonable. Um, we're still in a bit of a drought, so uh, the rain from this weekend was pretty light. The heavy downpours from last week were really scattered, so it really depends on where the rain fell as to which streams benefited. For example, the Dry River got a lot of rain last week, which really helped kind of with its, help its low water. Um, other streams like the North River didn't get hardly at all, so they're low. You're gonna find that all over the place. You may go to a creek um, this, street, this, this week high up in the mountains and find that it's just super, super low. So anyway, we still need more rain. Um, low water really actually benefits us on the larger streams, so that's where we'll start. The Shenandoah and the James are lower than average, they're clear. Um, the rains from this week kind of just kept them at, at the same level. They didn't really drop off much at all. Um, the fishing's quite good. So we're at approximately August water level flows uh, on all these streams. So what that means is the surface is uh, accessible to these fish. They don't have like 10 feet of overwash going over top of them. So we've actually been catching a decent amount of fish on top water. Now here's the thing about top water fishing on our big rivers. Um, in about three or four weeks, all of that star grass in the river is gonna grow up, forcing all the bait into it. About the same time that happens, we start having big damselfly hatches, dragonfly hatches, and the cicadas show up. And so a lot of the top water action we enjoy on the big warm water streams is due to low water, competition for food, the fish have a harder time eating, plus all these insects show up. We're not quite to that last part yet where the insects show up. And actually, we haven't had a lot of the star grass grow yet because it's a little early. So here's how we topwater fish this time of year. We fish with flies that imitate injured bait or minnows. And we just make a lot of noise. Um, so you can use things like uh, Todd's wiggle minnows. Um, you can use um, you know, hair bugs. We use a lot of frog patterns. So essentially what you're trying to do is the fish is sitting in two feet of water. It's not that hard for them to reach the surface. You're just making a little bit of noise, a little bit of disturbance on the top in order to grab their attention and hopefully convince them to come up. Um, and if they aren't willing to go all the way up to the very top, some of the patterns that work really well in shallow water are the Murdich minnow, the CK bait fish, the game changers. These are bait fish patterns that are designed to suspend. Um, so as you're drifting or wade fishing and you're, you're, your fly has to sweep across, um, you know, one to two foot deep water with ledges, you're not getting hung up all the time. Now, that being said, there's plenty of deep pools, plenty of deep runs where you really want to put on your heavy flies, your, your clawed edge, your critter mites and things like that to get down deep. So smallmouth bass fishing has been really, really good, especially for this time of year. It's only going to improve, okay? Um, they like warm days. They like consistent weather. Um, and then, like I said, as the bugs show up and the grasses grow up, the fly anglers are going to start doing better and better. All right. Um, the largemouth bass are still in their nests. The sunfish are still in their nests. So get out there and get after some of those smallmouth bass. Well, wow, it's really good. All right. Uh, moving on to the spring creeks. I was on some of the spring creeks a bunch this past week. So streams like Buffalo Creek, Beaver Creek, Mossy Creek, um, they do better under drought conditions. Okay. It doesn't mean they're not low doesn't mean the fish aren't spooky. They're just gonna be in better shape than streams up high in the drainage that really need a lot of rain. The sulfurs are still around. Um, haven't seen as many of the big spinner falls over the last few days, but they're there. Drakes are all moving in too. 
Um, yes, these spring creeks get really good drake hatches. Uh, yellow drakes, slate drakes, um, of course the green drake. So they all tend to peak right about now, right around Memorial Day. Um, and then they typically will last at least two weeks after. And then like I always say, after the last bug leaves, no one tells the fish, okay? So you can usually catch fish on those big patterns after the bugs are gone, all right? Um, so anyway, the trichos have been showing up in the morning, which is a good thing. Um, it's been pretty good. The numbers of trichos have been pretty good. Some fish are starting to key in on them. However, if the, if the trout have a really good evening foraging on drakes and sulfurs, um, it can be a little bit challenging in the morning to convince them to come up and eat, you know, a size 20 or 22. But that's going to be a really important bug throughout the summer. As we lose those big evening hatches, which is going to happen soon, the trico spinner falls, which can happen anywhere from 8 in the morning till 10.30 in the morning, they're going to become a lot more important. And then hopefully we'll start picking up more and more terrestrials over the next month. Still a little early for those. High up in the mountains, the key is, is stealth hasn't changed. We talked about this last week. Stay low, use longer leaders, um, fish low light. The evening spinner falls of drakes have been unbelievable. Um, there's yellow stone flies all over the place. Um, they'll eat just about anything. I had a little flying black ant that I put on last week and they just ate it on every cast. So the brook trout fishing is a lot of fun. The water temperatures are ideal, okay? Don't mistake low water for, for hot water. It was very cold this weekend. There was probably some spots in the mountains where it was like upper 30s at night, low 40s. So that, that sure, surely brought the water temperature back down some. Um, they're hungry. This is when they have to put on all their weight, all right? So get out and enjoy the brook trout fishing before it becomes really low and really hot. The fish become, you know, stressed out and spooked too easily. So um, that's about it. I'm, I'm not nymph fishing for brook trout at all. Just dry fly fishing. Um, anything will work. Big attractors, uh, hair's ear dry flies are one of my favorite. Um, some of these new para wolf patterns are great. They float really, really well. Two post uh, para wolves. Um, so, and then your, your drakes and your stone flies. Anyway, there's a lot to go fish for um, and uh, there's a lot to be thankful for. So everybody get out there, enjoy their day. Hopefully you have a day off and I will catch you all next week.